My last day in prison was a surprise because I woke up that morning with 10 years left on my sentence. So I did what I did every day. I got up and made a cup of instant coffee. Then I walked back to my bunk and did my reading and meditation. When the phones turned on at 6 a.m., I ran up there to make a phone call. I ate breakfast, I went to work at medical, I came back and I ate lunch, and I actually worked out in the dormitory because during outside rec I wanted to try to make a phone call. And with four phones for 80 people, there was this constant competition. That was why I usually made calls at 6 in the morning. So I was on the phone and I couldn't get through, and the counselor came out and said, hey, cross and come in my office. I walked in there and somebody was on the speakerphone. They said, Mr. Cross knew you sitting down. And I had this rush of worry because that was how they tell you you lost somebody you loved. Something terrible had happened on the outside. But instead, she rushed through and said, because you're leaving coffee with today, you've been granted a pardon. And I kind of hit a knee and I, I started tearing up and I just couldn't believe that this was real. And they said, oh, you better go get ready. So I walked out and I was still covered in sweat from my workout. So I went to go try to take a shower. But before I did, I found this one kid that I knew who didn't have any family and didn't have any support from the outside. So I called him over and I said, hey, man, I don't really know what's going on, but I may not be coming back. If I don't, I want you to keep all this stuff. But if I do come back, I need it. And I gave him all the stuff that I had, all the stuff that he didn't have, food and hygiene and tennis shoes, stuff that I knew he needed. I went and I took a shower and they were calling for me over the loudspeaker. And finally, I got out of the shower, I got dressed and I went and they had me go sign paperwork. But while I'm over there trying to sign the paperwork, they're like, oh, well, we can't find this, but we need to get it signed because if we don't get it signed today, we can't let you go. And I was like, what do you, like, what do you mean? You can't be putting me through this. And I had to go to property and I had to go to medical to sign for all my stuff. And I haven't actually ever gotten my medical records, which is weird, but I'm bouncing around. But all the while I'm like, this can't be real or they must've made a mistake or there's no way this is actually happening. And then they brought me back to the dormitory. And this time they brought an escort because apparently at that point I was actually a free person. So anything that happened to me would have been their responsibility. So they had an escort around me. So as I came in, guys were clapping and shaking my hand and giving me hugs. And so I went in and the few things I hadn't given to this one kid, I just started giving away to people. It was awesome because the lieutenant had been really clear. He was like, hey, you need to leave with everything that's on your property sheet. I said, look, man, like I'll do whatever y'all need to do. He said, but look, if you don't, like I probably won't be too mad. So I made sure that somebody got a TV and somebody got food and somebody got everything else. And then the last thing I know, I'm putting on these clothes. They have these like ridiculous release clothes. They're khaki pants and this khaki colored shirt. And the pants were way too long and hung over my shoes. And I did not care in the world. And I didn't get to say goodbye to everybody. And one of my big regrets is there was a guy that I was really close to who was walking down the boulevard. And I was going the other way when they were finally letting me go, an hour and a half after they had told me. And I should have run back and just given him a hug and said goodbye, but I was so much in shock and I was so much about not wanting to mess this up or get in trouble that I didn't. I just kind of waved and then walked out the gate. And then we're walking to the front of the prison. There's a sign that says, no inmates pass this point. And they walk me past that point. And that was when it started really hitting me like I was actually going home. And they put me through the double doors at the sliding doors. And I walk in there and there's my mom sitting like 20 feet away from me. But I got to sit there and fill out the rest of the paperwork and I can't go over there. And for 15 minutes, I'm filling out paperwork and they're explaining things and they're going through all the things they need to do. And finally, after those 15 minutes, like it was real. And I walked over there and I grabbed my mom and I picked her up and I started swinging her around. And she whispered in my ear and she said, Jesse, let's get the F out of here. I was like, okay. So I walked outside and I just remember the colors and the smell, just walking into the world for the first time as a free person in 19 years. I couldn't imagine it. We went and we got in the car and I was like, well, what do we do now? Like my whole life, all I've been dreaming about is getting out of prison. Like, what do I do now that I'm out? And so she gave me the phone and I called my then girlfriend and she was 45 minutes away and she'd been given 30 minutes notice. She was still kind of on her way. So we drove out to the end of the parking lot of the prison and right next to it was a driveway for a farm. So we parked in that driveway and I just sat there like looking at the sky and looking at the corn and just not being able to believe that I was where I was. And a few minutes later, she pulls up behind us and I had never met her in person because we first started talking back in 2019 when she did a story about my pardon request, about everything that was going on, but it was only by phone. And then during COVID, once we'd even started a relationship, we couldn't meet because no visits were happening. So this was somebody that I'd never met in person. I'd seen on TV, I'd talked to on the phone, I'd even done a video visit with, but all of a sudden she was standing in front of me. It was just this magical moment. We ran off and we spent some time together and had a wonderful time. And then I went to Costco because it was like, okay, we got to get all the things for life. And this wasn't expected. This wasn't planned. And all of a sudden I'm going through and thinking I need clothes and I need tools. And like, what do I need to do? And I'd had some money in my account so I could buy things. 
But three or four items in, I just had a breakdown. I just couldn't take it anymore. I just started kind of shaking and went to a knee. And I was like, I, I got to go. I can't deal with this. So we went back and we got in the car and we started driving back to the house. And I just remember like I was looking down because she had given me her phone and I'm like looking through Facebook and all these other things. And I can't believe because I'm getting messages because on the way to pick me up, my mother had posted like, I'm going to get Jesse. He's going to be free today. And I had all these messages and all these people offering me a place to live or a truck or tools or asking me what I needed or just saying congratulations. And I was both numb and completely emotionally overwhelmed. And she kept saying, hey, look up here. And I'm looking at the mountains. Like I hadn't been able to see mountains in so many years. I didn't even know how to describe it. And then finally we get home and we had bought steaks. And I was so excited. But she was like, no, no, we don't have time to cook the steaks. We'll have to do that tomorrow. And I remember this flash of anger. Like I've been waiting 19 years to eat a steak. But it was a good thing because I came home and I couldn't eat. They had this bowl of stew and I tried to take one bite and I almost threw up and I was just so adrenalized and so full of craziness that I didn't know what to do. I was just completely overwhelmed. So I was like, okay, we're we're gonna get through this. We hung out you know, that night, we spent some time together, and then everybody went to sleep. And I laid there and I tried to lay there. I couldn't do it. I didn't sleep for three days. And so I ended up getting up and I ended up coming out to the porch and I turned the light off and I was sitting out there next to nature. It was quiet. I could hear the animals. I could see the moon. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I remember sitting there and that was where I really started to realize I was free. Like I was out in the world. I was not going to wake up in prison the next day. This was not a dream. I was actually done with that whole experience.